Welcome to this walkthrough of features in Flow CSV Viewer and Editor. In this video I will show you all the major features available in both these applications. The additional features of Flow CSV Editor are shown in the next video. To open a CSV file, click Open and select a file in the dialog. You could also just drag a file into the window. Instead of showing the content in a grid with rows and columns like in Excel and many other CSV file editors, Flow CSV Viewer and Editor show the data as line plots directly. Each column is turned into a variable and all variables are listed here in the variable view. Each row is turned into a sample and the samples are distributed over the x-axis here in the plot view. This way you immediately get a full picture of the entire data. To resize the different areas in the window, just click and drag the line between them. You can also hide columns in the variable view by right-clicking the header line and unchecking a column name. To hide a variable, right-click it and select Hide in the menu. To restore any hidden variable, right-click anywhere in the variable view and select Unhide All. As you can see, the variables are separated into groups, and such a group is called a cell. Variables in a cell share the same chart. To move a variable from one cell to another, just drag it to the new cell. To change the color of a plot, click and hold the color box and then move the mouse cursor over the color you prefer and release the mouse button. To hide or show a plot, click the checkbox. To create a new cell, drag a variable name to the empty space in the bottom of the variable view. The new cell ends up in the bottom of the variable view, so you may have to scroll down to find it. To reorder the cells, click and hold the mouse button in the empty area at the bottom of a cell and drag it to where you want it. To resize the cell, click and hold the mouse button on the double line below the cell and drag up or down. To hide the legend, click the legend button. The cursor is a pointer to a sample and is shown as a box with a sample number in the ruler and a vertical line through the plots. The values shown for each variable in the variable view are the values of the cursor sample. To move the cursor, click anywhere in the plot, drag the box in the ruler, or click a peak to position the cursor exactly on the peak sample. You can also use the left and right cursor keys on the keyboard to move the cursor one sample at a time. Or hold the control key and use the left and right cursor keys to move the cursor one ruler marker at a time. To zoom in horizontally, place the mouse cursor over the plot and use the scroll wheel. To zoom in vertically, hold the control key while using the scroll wheel. To pan over the data, hold the left mouse button and drag over the plot. To restore the zoom to fully zoomed out, click the Out All button. Another way to zoom in is to use the Zoom tool. To enable the Zoom tool, click the Zoom tool button. To zoom in, click and drag a box over the area to zoom into and release the mouse button. To zoom in vertically, drag straight down. To zoom in horizontally, drag straight right. To see some basic statistics for a variable, click it in the variable view. Below the plots you can see the sample count, lowest value, highest value, total sum, average and sample standard deviation for that variable. To see statistics for only a certain range of samples, first click the Select Tool button to enable the Select Tool, 
Then click and drag towards the right in the plot to select a range of samples. Finally, select the variable. Now the statistics are shown only for the selected samples. Optionally, if the plot is well separated from the other plots in the same cell, you can select the variable and samples at once by clicking directly on the plot and dragging to the right. A formula is a mathematical expression that's assigned to a new variable called a formula variable. To add the new formula variable, double click in the white area of a cell to bring up a box where you can enter the formula. Start with the name of the new variable, followed by an equal sign, followed by the expression. Then press enter. The formula is computed for all samples and the plot of the new variable is shown in the plot view. The arrow in front of the variable name indicates that it's a formula variable. To see the formula again, move the mouse cursor over the name. To refer to the previous sample in a formula, use the delay operator. The delay operator is written with the variable name followed by square parenthesis t minus 1 and square parenthesis. Notice that the first sample becomes undefined because it refers to a sample that doesn't exist. To redefine a formula variable, double click the name which brings up the box again. This formula can be defined for all samples by using the if operator, which switches between two expressions depending on a condition. The if operator is written with the first expression, followed by if, followed by the condition, then else, and finally the second expression. To remove a formula variable, right-click the name and select Remove in the context menu. To undo any formula operation, click the Undo button. To redo them again, click the Redo button. To learn more about formulas and their functions and operators, go to Help and open the Formulas and Expressions chapter. To search for plain text in any data value, click the Find button or you could also press Ctrl F on the keyboard. Enter the text to search for and press F3. The cursor moves to the next sample containing the text and the variable with that value is selected. Press F3 again to find the next value. You can also search with a Boolean expression over the variables. To search with the Boolean expression, open the Find box again, enter the Boolean expression, and press F3. The cursor moves to the next sample that satisfies the expression, and in addition all satisfying samples are selected. A project is a collection of data files along with their formulas. Since CSV files don't support formulas themselves, formulas are saved in the project file instead, but this requires that the CSV file is added to the project. To add a CSV file to the project, go to the project menu and select Add Files, and then select the file. The file name appears in the project view to the left. After closing the file, you can open it again by double-clicking the file name. Notice that the formulas are retained because they are now stored in the project. To save the project file, go to the file menu and select Save Project. If it hasn't been saved before, choose a location and a name. 
That concludes the walkthrough of features in Flow CSV Viewer. In the next video, I'll continue to show the additional features available in Flow CSV Editor. So if you're the owner of Flow CSV Editor, you'll want to see the next video as well.